Dustin Ryder, Dustin Ryder here with my review of the Superstar Blade from Power Rangers Super Ninja Steel. So many supers and none of it really is. So just like the Ninja counterpart, this is basically a repaint of the standard blade um, with a couple little differences here and there. This one actually I think has a little bit more of a significant difference in a way than Ninja's counterpart, but we'll get to that in a second. Um, it does come with a star, which is basically just a different version of the Gold Ranger's power star. Um, it came with a different one in the Japanese version, which I'll get to again in a second, but this is basically, here it is next to, this is like the regular one. It just has like it gets rid of the like the letters here and it just has like stars around it and it's the same uh, cheapo mold for that but just to get that out of the way let's go ahead and take a look at it in the morphers nothing too surprising we'll do regular ninja steel first so same noise oh of course There we go. Alright, and then just because it's only one and it's not a bunch, uh, we'll do the gold morpher even though it's really nothing at all. Activate. Again, it still baffles me that that couldn't even say Gold Ninja Power Star. Like, the Gold Ranger's morpher couldn't even say it. Oh, something just fell in the background. Anyway, okay, so here's the blade itself, and it's actually not that bad. Uh, very similar to uh, the regular one. I actually prefer the U.S. version in a couple ways. Mainly, it is longer, um, and it's, it's just, like, overall not too terrible, and it's not really missing that many of the details. We'll bring the other one in here in a second, but it's, like, not a bad size, and when you press the button, this actually pops out, which gives it um, even longer of a blade, so it actually doesn't feel too far off from the show. It's a little bit skinnier, it's less cumbersome around here because you don't have the need for a large base for the shuriken. So it overall just comes off looking nice and sleeker and I think is one of the stronger things the line does. Um, obviously here there's no buttons that work, it's only this button here. Um, but let's go ahead and take a look at the sounds first and then we'll do a, a brief comparison. So turn it on, activation noises, press this button. Some lighting up there. Very, various sort of messy clashing sounds. They sound honestly very, very muddled. Okay, so you can put any star in and... You get that noise, which I actually really like that noise for some reason. There's just something satisfying about it. And then you get a couple different noises when you... When you have that there. And there's nothing really that happens when you hold it down. Like it's different. It's like the same clashy noises. It is kind of neat though that like when it has the star in it's different by having all the lights up rather than just one. Um, just to show you if you hold it down in this mode too, it'll just still do nothing like that. Okay, and just for the heck of it, that in. So same noises. I was just going to show that, you know, there's not really a difference. And the only spinning that happens is like this and it doesn't activate anything. I've mentioned before when it's brought up that it's kind of a failure of the line that there's no spinning since it's such a big part of the show. And in the morpher, even though they do have it in the morph in the show, um, which is unique to us, I'm fine with the morpher not spinning because the Japanese toy didn't do it and other than the morph it's not seen that often in the show and they don't have to worry about the reader, you know, in the morpher but by not having it spin. But in the case of this, in which they didn't give it a reader and its only purpose is to make generic clashing noises, they should have made this be able to spin because it's seen so often in the show. I can't imagine there's not at least a few kids that pick this up and are disappointed that they can't reenact it from the show. Okay, here it is next to its Japanese counterpart. As you can see, there are some differences. The red color is slightly different, especially up here in the blade area. It's almost more of a ruby red. This bend is something that happened to mine personally and not the way it's supposed to be. And uh, the blade does not extend out. These buttons are obviously functional on this. And the difference also here is that they give it a flame blade, which is something not display in the normal mode here, 
which is not exactly show accurate for when you just have the blade like this, but I honestly think it's kind of a cool touch and makes this look a little bit cooler and more unique and sort of fits in with the whole Blaze Megazord theme that they're tying everything around. So I actually prefer that even if it's not 100% show accurate in this mode. It kind of gets into that territory where for people that only want to pick up one, obviously, it's kind of annoying that this isn't show accurate. But for me, who already has had this for a couple years, it's nice to get something different. And as you can see, another significant difference being this comes with this large different star here, and it has electronics in it and works differently with voices. So that's quite different there. And then this is pretty much the same looking, you just have this clear plastic coating here on the Japanese version. And as you see, it's got this larger, clunkier area for its reader. But yeah, overall, this is very okay, honestly. It's obviously very different than its counterpart because it doesn't work with electronic shurikens and different sort of reading noises, and you don't have the buttons here. It's basically just a generic PR weapon that makes clashing sounds, but I do appreciate the look of it. I think that the flame was a cool addition, and I like that they are a sleeker um, and longer size so that they feel more like what you would see in the show. But anyway, that's about it. Until next time, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Dawson Ryder, signing out.